So yeah, just a, a quick overview for everybody, just so that you know what's coming today. So essentially the process that we're going to use, we're going to create a raw data file just using data that we just copy straight from AliExpress. I'm then gonna talk you through how we take that file and the, the setup that I use in ChatGPT and I've already got the prompt file created. It's the same prompt file that you guys will be able to access after the session. So you'll see, I'm literally just going to copy and paste the prompts into ChatGPT, and we're gonna go through that process live together. So we'll see what kind of product description it comes up with. And yeah, you can actually see it firsthand exactly how this process works. And then at the end, I've got a couple of little bonus tips and tricks. To hey, with you. Charles. Hey, guys. We have uh, Justin in the background. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> <laughs> just, just peeped and said hi to everyone on the live so that's awesome sorry to break, cut you off there charles <laughs> no perfect uh yeah so so that's just kind of the high level agenda just so you know what to expect but most of it is going to be me sharing the screen just showing you through the process to that point i'm going to try and zoom things in a bit so if anybody's watching on mobile you can see but if there's any issues with uh, things being too zoomed out or anything just drop a message and i'll, I'll try and zoom my screen in a bit to make it a bit easier for people to see as well sounds good brother so we are good to go to the next slide and and these are the steps that Charles has set up for us. And then uh, soon we're going to go ahead and dive deeper into the live example, guys. So make sure you're paying attention. Make sure you're taking notes. And this is going to be available as a replay in all these groups as well. So definitely rewatch this a couple of times as well. Perfect. Awesome. So yeah, so these are the first few steps. So basically just going to go through, we're going to create a Google Doc. We make it publicly accessible so that we can access it through ChatGPT afterwards. And then just a few little things that I recommend, which I'll show you in the Google Doc. So yeah, if you wouldn't mind letting me take control of the screen, then Absolutely, I will. Sir. I'm going to remove this and then I'm going to add this, brother. Can you okay. see everything? Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So this is the product I'm going to use as the example product. I'm sure lots of us have seen ads for this. I apologize in advance if this is one of your products on your list that you're working on at the moment. But if nothing else, then maybe you can see how simple this is. So this is the product. And what I've done is I've just created this test product Google Sheet. You'll see it's super raw. I haven't done anything exciting to it. I've literally just copied and pasted all of the data that I found on different AliExpress listings for this product. So you can see it's super raw. It's still got weird little emojis and stuff that are in here that copied from the listing. And only a couple of things I suggest when you set up your Google Sheet is just go through and strip the formatting using this button here, just so that there's no weird formatting that ChatGPT picks up. Technically, you could point ChatGPT directly to the AliExpress listing, but you know I found that it does pick up weird things like depending on what's on the page, it can pick up like reviews and that kind of stuff, which I don't really want. I want to be a little bit more targeted on what data I want ChatGPT to learn from. And so I just copy the core product information into this file and strip formatting. Once you've done that, you just want to hit share and make sure that anyone with the link can access it. Viewer permission is fine. And you can copy that link. That's the link you want to use for this process I'm going to show you, just so that the link is publicly accessible and ChatGPT can pull that in. Now, with that said, what I'm going to be showing you today is this prompt file here. Like I say, this is set up so that you can absolutely just copy and paste these prompts directly in and you'll see me do exactly that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to copy this first section of the prompt and then I will walk you through what I'm doing with this prompt. In ChatGPT, a couple of things I suggest. If you can use the pro version or the plus version of ChatGPT, I highly recommend it. It works a whole lot better. There's a few features that we're going to use today that you're going to need. But with that said, this does work on the free version of ChatGPT as well. And when we get to the Q&A section at the end, I'm more than happy to walk you through some of the changes you need to make if you're using the free version versus the plus version. Within GPT-4 on the plus version, you're going to to enable plugins. And there's only one plugin that you need, which is this plugin. It's a free plugin called Browser Op. Now, depending on when you watch this video, maybe in the future, this particular plugin lets us go and extract information from external links. I have noticed that these plugins, GPT kind of recycles them sometimes. So by the time you're watching this, you might have to find a different plugin that does this, or maybe by then the browse with Bing will be a lot better and you'll be able to just use it directly. But at least for the time being, use Browser Op. And that's going to let us go and extract data from our link that we just created in the Google Sheet. 
So all I'm going to do here is paste the first prompt and I've got a section here where we need to add the product name. So I'm just going to call this the Pro Sleep Headband, for example. And I'll show you quickly before I actually fire away with this prompt. What you'll see I do is I give ChatGPT a series of instructions and I teach it a process I want it to follow with specific steps where I want it to stop and present information to me so that I can review it, see if I'm happy with it before it carries on. You'll see as we proceed why I do this, but just to step you through the actual prompt. So I'd like you to help me create a product description for a new product called the Pro Sleep Headband. We'll use the following steps to create the description together. Step one, you'll ask me for a website link. That's going to be the Google Doc link we just created. Step two, I will provide the link and you will confirm you can read the text in the document I provide. Step three, you will ask me the format I would like you to use for the first paragraph. Please label the first paragraph the opening. Step four, you will use the format I provide to create a paragraph and then check with me if I'm happy. If I'm happy, we will continue to the next paragraph. If I'm not, I will provide you further prompts on how to fix it. Wanted to jump in and say, this looks phenomenal. Like this is so cool. It's like we're actually telling Imagine like you're a professor and you're telling students to kind of help them out, build something together. And that's just exactly what it sounds like. I love the fact that you also included that you wanted to provide a confirmation whether that's good enough. And if it's good enough is then we're when we're going to go ahead and move on to the next phase. So it's essentially, you know, for those who have, you know, done any coding in the past, essentially the easy way to do code, because instead of writing everything in code, you're just simply writing everything in just a text form and you're requesting uh, AI to help you out with this. So super, super phenomenal, guys. Let's continue watching. Perfect. And then, yeah, step five, once I confirm I'm happy, then we're going to move on to the next paragraph. We will repeat this process six more times to create six unique paragraphs. And I would like you to label each paragraph using the following format. So you can see here, so I've got the opening, I've got what I call an introduction, bullet points, understanding, closing, product specifications, and product content or package content. So I've really laid out to ChatGPT exactly what I want it to do. And like I said, I've given it those points where I want it to stop and ask me for confirmation before we carry on. Once again, during the Q&A, I can explain a bit more about why I do this. And yes, I just saw the question pop up. I'm going to give out this prompt to everybody, so don't worry. I'm going to give you all the prompts that we use today. You don't have to try and copy these or keep tabs on it. You're going to get the whole prompt file that you can use yourself. So let's fire away. Okay, cool. So you can see there, it's understood. It's asking me for my link as per my instructions. So I'm just going to go and grab this link that we created. And I'm going to paste that in here. And all going according to plan. Okay, it's not using this plugin for some reason. That's fine. I'll tell you what we'll do instead. We will, and this is exactly what we'll do if you have the other version of, like the free version of ChatGPT. We can literally just paste the text in. So as per my instructions, it's now asked me, I can, it's learned what the raw data is that I've provided and it wants my instructions on how to create the opening paragraph. So if I jump back into my prompt file, I've literally broken this down for you. So you get a prompt for every single paragraph. So I'm just going to paste this in and I'll just show you, you'll see this format starts looking quite similar, but our first paragraph will focus on an aspect of pain that the user experiences without our product. We want to focus on the struggle people will face without our product. And I'd like you to use the following formatting rules when creating this paragraph. Do not mention the product specifically yet for this particular one. Do not use a specific identifying words like you or your. I want you to bold a few specific pain point words throughout the paragraph. And I want to keep the paragraph to a maximum of about three sentences and 60 to 80 words. So as you can see, it goes along, creates the first paragraph for me, struggling to find comfort during sleep. I won't read through all of this, but you know, generally what I do at this point is I'll read through this and I'll see if I'm happy with what it's saying. I will show you an example, like in this particular case, let's just say, you can see here, you know, how does this look? Would you like to make any changes? Looks great. Let's continue. 
Charles, that's so cool, man. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. And it's next step now. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So now it knows, like I told it that the next step is we're going to create an introduction together. And so now it's asked me for my next prompt. So that's fine. If you go back to the prompt file, you'll see here, here's the introduction prompt. So we're going to grab this, copy and paste that over. And so this one, I just ask it to actually introduce the product. I ask it to introduce the high level benefits. And so let's have a look here. Introducing pro sleep headband, revolution, blah, 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 and a pro wireless capabilities, integrated speakers, latest Bluetooth. So here's an example, right? So how does this look? Let's say, okay, I don't, for the introduction, like Bluetooth's not that amazing, right? So I might say, please focus on a different benefit not Bluetooth. So this is just to show you how like you can interact with it on a paragraph by paragraph stage. And so now it's going to rewrite it and cool. There you can see it's focused more on the ultra thin flat headphone speakers, which is something more interesting, like something that get people a bit more excited than necessarily like Bluetooth functionality, right? Most things have got Bluetooth now. So I'm going to look at that and I'm going to say, cool, I'm happy with that. So I will grab my next prompt and just say, yes, let's continue. Now it should ask me for step three, which is our bullet points. Perfect. So here's the prompt again. It's the same again. For this paragraph, I'd like three to five bullet points specifically focusing on the features of the product and then start each bullet point with a green check mark emoji, create a bold title after the green check mark emoji before proceeding to the feature description. And I even given an example, I want check mark, title, description, and then some of the similar things that I've had in the previous prompt, don't use things like you or your, and I give it some specifics around bullet points. So we'll hit that and see what it comes up with. So it's going away and thinking about all the features at the moment. And then while it does that, I will grab the next prompt. I'm really thinking about this one. <laughs> it thinking is probably still faster than us trying to write. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely much better. I'd rather wait for this. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, let it, uh, let it do its thing. That's um, so yeah, cool. You can see. So now, yeah, it's using my exact format for for the bullet points and much like that process I showed you before, you know, if you see any particular points that it comes up with that, you know, you don't think are as important because we've got that step in there to ask it to confirm if we're happy, we can just give it a little bit of feedback on, you know, don't focus on this point or, you know, you could even just tell it things like reorder the points so that, you know, I want these points, I want this to be the top point, you know. So yeah, so adding in that step to to be able to kind of give it some constructive criticism is really helpful. So we'll just let that run. And then as soon as that's done, then I will drop in the next one. I like that it's actually thinking about this. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like it's yeah. good. That means we've given it pretty good prompts for it to like actually think about it, follow it, make sure it's following our structure, guys. Also, something very important to remember as this is thinking, you know, this is a very, you know, helpful hand from AI, you know, utilizing and leveraging the latest technology that we all have available to us and this beautiful earth. But also keep in mind that, you know, you definitely want to review this. Like Charles had said, you definitely want to go ahead and give it prompts to adjust things. This shouldn't be your final format. You should definitely read it over, double check with this, the quality, the standards that we at BSF uphold to double check with all the sentence objectives. You know, we don't want to just say, all right, well, you know, ChatGPT is going to do our e-commerce for us. It's more of a helping hand and it's more of for you to avoid the writer's block, which he said earlier, right? We can literally think for hours before we write a specific piece of copy. So if this is helping us getting started, I love using like, you know, AI for just like the start of things. And then I can always modify it to make sure it looks like not obviously written only by AI, but also uh, modified by myself. So therefore it comes to the final piece, right? So just remember that as you guys are continuing to watch and uh, this looks good. Awesome. So yeah, so you can see there, it's produced my bullet points in the format that I gave it, green check mark, bold, a couple of short sentences and bolded some of the important items in each one. Let's go, yes, let's proceed. So you'll see like this process is very similar now. So next we're moving on to our understanding paragraph. I'll just go through quickly and I won't go through all of the prompts. You can read through these prompts now that you understand how they work. But I'm just gonna go through quickly and load the last few prompts so that I can show you, show you a few things at the end. 
looks great we're almost there so next we have our closing prompt pop that in there let it do its thing looks good okay last couple of prompts here So this one is the product specification. So I've just asked it to go and, and grab, create a bullet point of all the, the product specifications. Looks good. And lucky, well, second to last. This is the last content creation one. So now I'm just going to ask it to create a section on the package contents. And then this will be the interesting one. This one sometimes ChatGPT doesn't like, but lately it's been working pretty well for me, is now I'm going to ask it to combine all of those paragraphs into one final product description for me. So now it's taking each one of those different paragraphs that we created. It's bundling it all into one final product description. And this is now what I can take and go and paste directly into the Shopify description field and get it ready to submit for auditing for the BSF team. So we'll just let that finish. And yeah, hopefully you guys can see the power of the series of prompts. It certainly for me has helped the writer's block issue and uh, has sped up the number of products I can create big time. Charles, this looks great. I love the way how it like, uh, my favorite part about this is like how you fed it, like almost like you're having a conversation and then before you moved on to the end point, you were agreeing with, you know, what you guys have done, you know, now, and then later on, you're saying, okay, well, you know, what about this, this section, this section, this section, so you confirm everything, and it looks pretty good to go. And someone had asked a question for you, they said, have you tried to ask chat GPT to give you HTML code as well? So you can copy and paste it directly in Shopify. Uh, that's a great question. I haven't for these descriptions really said and thought about it. To be entirely honest, I'm sure we absolutely could. I usually just copy this across myself, but yeah, I've had ChatGPT turn other stuff into HTML for me. So you're right, we could absolutely do that. Um, that's a really clever idea. Yeah, I mean, to, to add to that point as well, you know, obviously having created hundreds of descriptions myself, I think it would be a good idea to also note, like we can copy this and paste it into Google uh, Documents, right? And we can, uh, you know, apply normal text formatting. As you guys know, we don't want any formatting here. If you have underlining and bolding, sometimes that messes up with spacing issues on Shopify product description editor, right? Mm -hmm. So um, HTML file will work great, but then again, you're going to have to modify that anyway. So I like just sticking to the traditional process of just converting it into a Google document and then, you know, go back and then pasting it into product description and modifying it yourself. But Charles, this looks phenomenal. I love the way how you were able to walk us through the live example. I know the browser extension didn't work or the add-on didn't work, but you've technically showed us how to do it if you didn't have the chat GPT-4 anyway, right? You didn't have the plus, so this would be That's amazing. Right. It was actually, it kind of worked out well that that didn't work because, uh, yeah, you know, if, if the extension works, then it's as simple as pasting the link, but if you have the free version of chat GPT, you can't yeah. have the extension anyway, and so, yeah, you, you can gotcha. see that. Just, just copy and paste the raw data and get it to use the raw data directly instead. And someone just said, uh, I closed my store because I was tired of writing product descriptions. This is really helpful and will save time. Thanks, Justin, I'll definitely hit you up after the call. That's awesome. Yeah. That's <laughs> like That's, to hear. This is good to hear. This is good to hear, guys. You know, we can leverage the technology here. So, you know, he has the PDF open and uh, we're just going to go ahead and finish up these slides here, guys. And then we're going to go hop into Q&A shortly as well. So definitely make sure to think about some questions that you can ask us, anything and everything. And we will be able to go ahead and present that question on the screen. And Charles and I will give our insights on those questions. And uh, yeah, Charles, take it away. Yeah, no. So just a, a few final closing things, just the kind of bonus tips and tricks. So you can see, yeah, we've kind of gone through this process, gone through the real world example. A couple of extra things that you can do to, to really take it to the next level. You can update the prompt right at the start and actually tell GPT who your target audience is. I find that if you say up front that the target audience is like, you know, maybe it's mums, maybe you've got something for athletes, describe a little bit on who your target audience is, then you'll actually get a much more targeted product description at the audience as well. So that is definitely something I can recommend. I also, in the raw data file, or in the case of like where the extension didn't work and we pasted it in, if you can spend a little bit of time just writing your own like one sentence right near the top on why you think this product is, you know, super important, super useful, whatever, 
that can often go a long way as well as opposed to just using the kind of raw AliExpress data. One thing, a term you guys may or may not have heard is GPT hallucinations. GPT is getting better and better at getting rid of these, but basically what they mean is sometimes GPT just makes things up for some unknown reason. And so this is why auditing what it says particularly when you get into things like the package contents and the product specifications is really important. Double check that what it's created actually matches the product. I don't want you guys getting in trouble because you put something in the package contents that GPT has just hallucinated for some reason. Like I say, it doesn't happen that much anymore, but if you're using the free version, then you might see more hallucinations. And another thing that can be super powerful, and we can even just show this on screen quickly, is I find sometimes testing different readability grades can be really powerful. So an example might be, say, for, uh, let's rewrite paragraph two. Give me examples with a fourth. If you find that the language that it's using is maybe kind of too complex, then adjusting the reading grade level can be a really good way just to get it to kind of soften the type of language that it's using, maybe make it a bit easier and not use such like big words and that kind of stuff. So that can be a really powerful thing to test if, if you feel that the language it's using doesn't align with like your brand, for example. Oh, I love the way it, it, it outputted like, <laughs> the different grades like that's crazy yep. guys like i've used chat gpt before but like for simple questions and stuff all the reactions you're seeing for me is genuine like i've not gone to the detail of actually talking to chat gpt and prompting it and also guys like there's like voice i'm pretty sure you can like type it using your voice like voice typing yeah. so let's say for example if you have it on your phone or if you have it on uh, your laptop you know you have enabled dictation you're able to go ahead and speak and then ask it things to do so you're essentially having a conversation with ai which is phenomenal another point i really really liked about this is you can constantly update these prompts right you can say hey you know for the past two times it's been making you know this error maybe i didn't even include it in a prompt so you can add another step and say hey by the way Instead of bolding the first paragraph, why don't we underline the negative references here? Oh, let's say if it underlined it, you know, much longer sentences, you can rewrite a prompt and say, instead of underlining longer phrases, let's underline shorter phrases or maybe only, you know, small words or references. Mm -hmm. So things like that, you can guys, you can really, really modify on this. So this is a really, really good example template to get you up and going and started, but um, it could be modified significantly to make it work the way you yeah. want it to work, right? So that's yeah, another so Absolutely. And this, I can tell you, like from trial and error, you know, this started with maybe like these two and then <laughs> like, okay, add this, add this, add this. So absolutely. Like you can just add more bullet points onto these and you'll see a lot of them kind of, I copy and paste across different prompts. So yeah, as you find those things that once again, align with like how you want your descriptions to look, just take my prompt and add extra bullet points on to train the AI the way that you want it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So awesome. So now, okay, so you're going to give us a prompt file. That's amazing. People are asking, how are you going to go ahead and share the prompt file? Charles, you can go ahead and send it to me maybe, because if you're not in all the groups, I'll just comment down below, like kind of, uh, you know, of the prompt file. That's something that we can do. And uh, yeah, kind of, we can make that happen as well for you guys. Now we just entered Q and A. So for those individuals who have questions, please go ahead and make sure to comment your questions down below and we'll be happy to help go ahead and, you know, answer them for you as well. So I know people earlier have asked a couple of things. I'm going to go ahead and review them again. So one of them was, have you tried to ask chat GPT to give the HTML code? So yeah, as I mentioned for that specific question, just guys be careful with, you know, the HTML side of things, because once you paste it on Shopify or you paste it directly from chat GPT to Shopify, you might have issues with spacing and text spacing issues. And, you know, we want to make sure that we don't have those issues. So you can go to the Google documents. You can do an extra step of running Grammarly on it, right? To make sure you have no spelling mistakes. Obviously chat GPT won't give you spelling mistakes, but, um, you know, maybe, you know, double check your grammar and uh, see if you trained it right. If anybody's got any questions, gotcha. after you start digesting all of this, yeah. Reach out we to me. Do. I'm in all the BSF groups, so you can just drop me a question straight in the group. We do have it here. So it says, what are your biggest challenges facing as an entrepreneur in e-commerce? 
So, okay. I mean, I guess, Charles, you can also answer that as well. You know, I guess since you are part of, you know, both the e-commerce side of things as well as just, you know, general online marketing and service scaling. So I guess if you want to share a little bit, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Well, I would say like for me before joining the BSF program, my biggest challenge was always just getting consistency with any sort of Facebook ads. I really struggled to get consistency with it after going through the BSF program. You know, I always felt like I was just throwing money at the wall and seeing what stick, right? <laughs> like going through the BSF program that really helped me kind of put more more logic to the process. Like when something was going wrong, I started feeling like I knew more about where to go and look to find, you know, okay, maybe I can look at the analytics and understand, like spend a bit more time on maybe creating a, a new product video. And even just like the concept of like how to create a product video, I had no clue what to do before the BSF <laughs> program. <laughs> right? so, so yeah, that kind of stuff. Like it just, th there was this like layer of fog where I just felt like I was just kind of, trying to figure things out myself and being able to join the group and just have it all kind of like presented to me on a platter of like, do this, do this, do this. If something goes wrong, here's what to go and check. I think that, yeah, to me, that was the biggest challenge was just like, uh, you know, my background is more on the technical side of e-commerce, a lot of the kind of integrations and, and creating custom apps and that kind of thing. And so when it came to actually the sort of the Facebook ad side and even just creating a, a converting landing page and that kind of thing, that to me, you know, and to be honest, like that's why I developed these GPT prompts, right? Because I was able to just learn the concepts of, you know, how to craft a powerful BSF product description and then take that and get GPD to help me with the uh, the writer's block component of it. That's amazing, man. You see, I know a lot of individuals have different actual challenges with e-commerce. I'm glad that you shared yours, especially being a successful student of ours as well. And thank you so much for obviously creating this prompt. We do have a couple other questions. Someone asked, I am using chat GPT, but usually I send it full prompt for all information. Do you think it's separate part? Like, okay. Yeah. So this is a good question because I also yeah, had this question. question. Yep. Yeah. So what do you think, Charles? Yeah. So my personal experience and the reason why I break it down like this is I find, you know, I mean, I, I guess like an AI shouldn't be like this, but I find like if you throw too much at ChatGPT at once, it like, it's like if you throw too much at a human, right? You throw too much at the human and they kind of forget bits or they like focus on the wrong bits. And so for me, like breaking it down like this and getting it to really focus on a paragraph at a time, I find I get a lot better results because I give it a very specific prompt for that paragraph. It goes away and does it. And then I can iterate on it where I found like trying to bundle it all in one prompt. If I then like it might do paragraph one really well, paragraph two really badly. And then I go and make a change to the prompt and say, can you fix this in paragraph two? And for some reason it goes and changes something in paragraph one again. Mm. Um, and so that's for me, like breaking it down into the stage process and being able to provide like very specific prompt details for each paragraph. That's just, you know, my personal experience has been that I get a much better result than just giving it one massive prompt to go away and figure everything out at once. Charles, that's great. Um, to add that, also, like, let's say, for example, if you wanted to modify something on the go, you can modify that specific prompt and ask it to rewrite that prompt without adjusting all the previous ones, right? Which exactly. is good. Cool. And, you know, yeah. having to go back and constantly say, paragraph two, sentence one, remove yeah. this. Paragraph exactly. three. You're now doing the auditing process anyway. So I'd rather just go through the prompt process. Now, of course, if you guys, I think. I, Charles, correct me if I'm wrong or, you know, share your insights on this. If, you know, you're producing with these exact same prompts and you're almost having to never change anything every time it produces it over like, you know, 10, 20, 30 landing pages or whatever, it might be a good idea to test, you know, just to see the entire prompt itself to see if it can actually do that for you. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's actually raised a good point. So what I try and do is I'll have a GPT chat for each product. So I don't, and I, I should have mentioned this up front. I don't do multiple products in a single GPT chat. So, you know, like we did this headband, that can be my headband chat. And I'll just like basically get GPT to keep focusing on that headband and refine the headband product. But let's say I have another product, maybe it's a kid's toy. I'll open up a new chat and go through the prompts again, particularly if I'm adding stuff like, you know, who the target audience is. Because otherwise I have found like if I try and do say the headband and then like a kid's toy in the same prompt, that's where you can start seeing a lot more hallucinations or it starts like accidentally pulling something from the toy into the headband description, that kind of thing. So to so definitely keep a separate chat for each product. Gotcha. Gotcha. It makes sense. So you would just open a new chat for every different product, correct? Yeah, absolutely. You, you, would, you wouldn't use the same chat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then but like if you need to go back, like let's say in six months time, you 
you know, I don't know, something changes about the product. Like I had this happen with mine and mine. It was a product that had batteries and then a new version came out that had, that was rechargeable. So I just went in and said, hey, this product's been updated to be rechargeable. And so, you know, the it's rechargeable and there's now, you know, a USB cable in the pack. Please go through and edit it. And then, yeah, it just went through and edited the original product description with the new information. Now that's cool. So that's also a benefit of having different chats because you're essentially saving your documents on chat GPT and you're referring back to it and you can salvage majority of the stuff for, let's say, for example, if there's a similar product that you want to do or maybe upgraded product, like you mentioned, you know, you can always modify that. We do have another question here. Charles, of course, I know that you have experience with targeting sheets and so do I. And if you haven't used this before, what would you maybe use ChatGPT? How would you approach it? Or I could probably share my insights as well. Yeah. So for me, when I've done targeting sheets and, and this is where like the browser extension, if that had worked, would have been really good. But um, yeah. Particularly with like the addition of browse with Bing in ChatGPT, or you could use an extension that allows you to search the internet. I've done stuff like there's like one of my products was more, I guess you could call it like scientific. And so there was an extension that referenced like scientific journals. And so I actually used ChatGPT to go and like search through journals and try and find like market research about the problem that this product was, sorry, not market research, like scientific research related to this particular problem. And so, yeah, that kind of stuff has been really helpful with like creating my targeting sheets because it showed me, I guess, kind of niches that I hadn't considered that that product could be used in with that sort of thing. So that's great. I did mention the fact that the niches are phenomenal from that. So I do remember individuals reaching out to me and saying that they have tried to ask ChatGPT to output interest keywords, and they were actually able to get out actual interest keywords that Facebook uses as well in their ads manager audiences section. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure, Michael, who asked the question, if you're able to go ahead and create a prompt for training it on every single column, just like how we kind of do it with the descriptions and you ask it and you request it, you know, for the live current audiences, can you please output interest keywords for let's say detail targeting less than 1 million? So you can say the individual audience sizing can be less than 1 million. You can say that a total audience sizing could be greater than, you know, let's say for example, like around four to 6 million range for potential reach. You should have a minimum of two to eight keywords. So kind of essentially training it that way you can give it a try, try it for one column. The only thing I think uh, would be a little difficult is, you know how we do the 33% rule here, right? So essentially, you know, maybe you would have to figure out where you would want the no narrow or the narrow or the single interest first, yeah. right? Before we do, uh, you know, anything like in terms of, you know, just drop it off. But um, I think that's pretty much it. We have all the questions answered here, Charles. Uh, thank you so much for putting on an incredible show. Absolutely love the fact that, you know, you went through everything in detail. You showed a live example. You will also be sharing the prompt with me. What you can do, you can simply send the prompt over to me and, uh, or if you can, you know, if you want to go ahead and make sure, you know, drop it in the replays for every group, go ahead and yeah. do that. Make sure everyone has that. And uh, let me know if you need any help there as well. And everyone give this a try. Definitely a phenomenal way to get started with e-commerce product descriptions, which is one of the most time consuming parts. I personally, I consider myself a decent, you know, writer and copywriter, I, I would say, but with that being said, I do not enjoy the process as much, right? So I would love for, you know, individuals to, uh, you know, be able to show me how to do it, which thank you so much, Charles, um, to, you know, share that with us. And I know a lot of students are, you know, thanking you right now. They will be able to use this on their own product descriptions and uh, hopefully expedite the process, make e-commerce kind of less scary as it seems to be. And eventually, you know, Charles, as you learn more things that you would like to share with us, you know, down to a couple of months and years that we're together, let us know, you know, we would love to hop on again, uh, provide much of value to our students. And thank you so much for everyone joining.